Welcome to Earth Impulse. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, this is Christine. Uh, I'm here with Claudia. We're both uh, co-founders of Earth Impasse. We're joined today with Neil Coons uh, and his wonderful blog, Lily Earthling Kolosova and Shane Bales, uh, a.k.a. The Ruiner. And today we're really blessed with uh, Randy Moggins joining us from Off Planet Radio. Um, he's been out there in the media field longer than any of us and his, well, really you have, I mean, we've all been in the, in the truth searching mode for, uh, probably most of our lives or many yeah. lives. Um, but having experience when being a public, <clears throat> public viewable person is a perspective that, uh, myself, I'm only learning about. So Randy, I'd just like to turn it over to you right now, uh, We've been having some Skype chats, individual conversations. You've been talking with Niels, with Shane, with myself. I don't think, I don't know if you and Lily and Claudia have really spent much time, uh, but we're finding that there's a common thread and there is a, uh, a gnosis or a knowledge base that's inside each of us that we're really trying to get forward and really looking into the alternative media circus right now and how it's being rolled out. What are the programs that you see running, Randy, and how do they interface with what your own journey's been? Well, there's a lot of programs running. The biggest program that's running is the concept of alternative media itself. Um, <laughs> we're kind of at the place right now where we're outstripping the mainstream media is it's so-called. They're losing audience. We're gaining it. The difference is that we're like uh, a bunch of ants out there. We are messengers. We are many. We are not one aggregated voice, and we don't function like that. And so a lot of the problem that I see right now is that we are being herded into a mentality where we need to be like the mainstream media. We need to aggregate, we need to, and when I say that, I'm not talking about what we're doing here today, which is a loose coalition of people of like minds. Um, I see the network effect coming into place in alternative media where big money comes in, where certain media outlets are now expanding their franchise, trying to extend their brand. Um, and using a lot of muscle to basically uh, cattle shoot listeners and viewers into a place where they can believe that they're getting uh, one-stop shopping for information and truth. The, the biggest thing that I see right now is people, it is not about the people who are putting media out, it is about the people who consume it. They need to be discerning. They need to understand that on any given day, much like we were talking about before cameras rolled, that on any given day, you view a YouTube video by somebody, you make a snapshot of that, and that becomes that voice, that person, that figure. That is not what it is. We are all people. We are fluid. We are moving. We're shifting and changing, and ideas change. I've changed a lot over the years. I started out in 2003 as a Christian broadcaster on an independent shortwave radio network out of Oregon. I eventually moved onto the web. I eventually moved out of that paradigm. It was a good place to start. There was great work done there, but it wasn't sustainable from a worldview standpoint. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if somebody went back to 2003, 2004, up until about 2011 and looked at 
who I was then. I'm not that person now. I've changed a lot. I've grown a lot. I've made a huge amount of mistakes along the way. And I've made a fool of myself on the internet in public view for a long time. So, you know, that's what people have to remember. Well, thank you for that. Uh, I think that what you said, a couple of things that really we were talking prior to recording is the, the fluid nature of life in the real, the real organic timeline that Lily addresses so well, is it is fluid. And so we're not like, none of us here are presenting ourselves as experts, authority. Well, each of us do, and this is what makes a, this type of uh, a presentation so valuable, is that we're presenting from our own inner truth, our own inner gnosis. And I have a timber and a tone to who I am. As I scrape away my barnacles, my scabs, as I heal myself, as I start to see clearer, that's the only way I can disclose anything. Because if I'm, if I'm coming in from, uh, with a proxy of an ET race or an ideology or a religion or anything like that, I'm putting up filters and veils. I'm actually in an agenda, right? So like you said, Randy, you, one risks being a fool, one risks being wrong. One risks everything in the end for truth. And that's the voice I'm hearing rising uh, individually and collectively right now or collaboratively because it's an aggregate. Like you said, they're individual beings, each of us within a field that holds us together, but we're not speaking from an agenda voice. We're not speaking from, from that place. And it's very empowering. Uh, and that that's a, the one thing I want to just put into the listeners discernment or mind to use their discrimination. Is this person I'm listening to giving me back my own power? It, are they leading me towards my own self sovereignty? Or are they trying to cattle shoot me? That was brilliant. You know, into a slot, a way of thinking, a one world way of thinking. You know, so those are the things that I think we'll be addressing uh, today. And also triggers. I think that's a really big one. Randy, you mentioned that earlier. And I know Shane has a lot of experience with that. Is how do you find those inner triggers? And how do you untrigger yourself? You know, what would, you know, I know Shane, if you want to jump in here, you speak a lot to that quite often. Yeah, something that was said there that was kind of important is just kind of um, work. We are doing this to ourselves. Like, uh, the programming, the conditioning, all of this process of waking up and becoming, it's not static, it's not stagnant, and it doesn't have a plateau that you reach and you don't go any further. You know, for everybody, it doesn't matter who you are, it's a process, it's a never-ending process of growing and evolving and expanding, and once you've got to a place where you think you got it figured out, that's when you realize you don't, and you, you go through the whole process again in a totally different direction. And I think that a lot of people in the alternative media, a lot of the speakers in, in our type of positions are kind of leading people in the wrong direction in that way, where they're trying to set a bar, so to speak, or a, a level that you're going to reach, whether it's ascension or the rapture or whatever you want to call it. This event, this point in time, this moment in your development is going to occur. And from there, you're done. And everything's going to be great. going to be gravy. You know, we're going to have everything we've ever dreamed and imagined. That doesn't make any sense. You know, it's a, it's a process, it's a growing, it's expanding. We see that in the universe, we see it in everything in our nature. It applies to us as well. And it's important to constantly do that work. Even if you think you've, you know, eliminated all your triggers, I guarantee you, if you do a little bit more digging, you're going to find some more, you know, there's, there's things that occur in your life that, you know, piss you off or even get you overly excited in a happy, joyous way. Mm -hmm. I see of those extremes as being uh, potentially dangerous. Uh, people notice that if you get like, you know, too excited, too happy, too elated, there's usually a fall after that where you fall all the way back down to the bottom of the spectrum where you're totally depressed, totally, you know, defeated, deflated, where if you kind of stop yourself from going too far up, then that fall isn't as far down. And that really plays into identifying your triggers because I got as an example, one of mine is if someone insults a friend of mine, I get really, really defensive. 
very defensive to the point where I'm almost blinded by my defensiveness because someone insulted one of my friends, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the person doing the insulting is actually correct. They're identifying something about one of my friends that is a problem, right? Or something that they're doing that is part of their own programming and conditioning. And in that case, should I be getting upset about it? Probably not. So that's a trigger for me. So you have to you have to look at those things. And you have to really consider why you're getting upset, why you're getting emotionally invested, and what you can do to maybe lessen that effect or at least bring it back into your own control. I talk a lot about um, controlling or harnessing your emotions, and I don't mean to use the word control in a negative or suppressive mm -hmm. way. And I want you to have that control, not somebody else. And all that. All that means is that you are in control of where your emotions are going, the energy produced from that, where that energy goes once it's produced, and the output you're putting into your world, the collective consciousness, consciousness, the morphogenic field, based on those triggers, reactions. And it's important for us to look at it, everybody to look at, not just me, but everybody who's out there speaking, and it, we're all in this together, so... Let's try and look at it from that perspective that we are all in it together instead of, you know, this person's above me, this person's below me. We're all we're all on the same journey, really. We're just at different stages in our own personalized, individualized versions of that process. It's an interesting um, what you're saying, too, is because how I see within my own journey because I've been on the the highs, highs, highs and the lows, 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 you know, that drama spectrum, right? You know, and it pumps through the system. And I think that's what the spectator within the media field, and let's just leave out alternative media altogether. You're right, Randy. It's now media. Okay. This is a medium of information, period. There's no alternative media any longer. All right. This is just it's all merging right now. So what I feel is like when you, when myself, if I'm in a, uh, I, I, I'm finding that I have an ability, which is the other side of control is response ability, or my ability to respond is within my universe, within my realm. And so I'm learning that I can transit emotions up or down the scale because a lot of people just want ascension, ascension, ascension. We want all the goody, goody, goodies when they don't really understand you can't have that in any balanced system without going down through the dark, 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 or the shadow, or what is really operating in that line between, what is really making this matrix or controlling this reality. And so being able to transit into the darker realms without losing self, transiting into the upper realms without losing self. And that's that point, that neutrality point. And, and I feel like most things are still uh, uh, being conformed to try to pull us off of that. It's like it wants to pull us off into something else. It wants to cattle shoot us. It wants to, to direct our attention somewhere else. And how much of a, a magician is like in the media world is like, look, 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 over here, over here. Oh, isn't that exciting? La, 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 la. Right? Because what it's doing is directing the attention of the spectator or the viewer. Well, really what's happening is down here, just below sight, just below the seen world, which to me, Randy, is that word, the cusp, right? We're sitting on that line between the seen and the unseen. And that's where, for me, responsibility comes in. When you hit that level, you, you, you become responsible in a lot of ways. And I'll be quiet now. <laughs> I wanted to <clears throat> add a little something, just that uh, the very idea that there's such a thing as privileged information, elite information, insider information that's going to somehow do something magical for you is to me just totally absurd, as if the universe would set up our growth and evolution to be dependent on who we know and what information, what specific information we've been exposed to. And if you haven't been exposed to some specific information, well, sorry, you're screwed. You don't get to evolve. You don't get to grow. And that's just an absurd notion. And yet that's kind of what everyone's trying to, trying to sell us on is that there's this special information that, that you need and we've got it packaged for you just, just right for, you know, and, and and to me, that just seems like about the most absurd thing 
that I could think of it, it, for a universe to be set up that way. That would be crazy. I call it simply a spiritual retarded people. Because when you think that way, I mean, how can you think that way? That you, a creator being, and your spiritual growth and your awareness depends on some person you don't know. Know the self and that that's, that's spiritual being, that's spiritual growth. And so um, I think that the agenda of the alternative media or those that are here bringing out these programs, you know, it's because that establishment depends on followers because we like it or not, but to them, and I found out this the hard way and some experiences that I had with some of these people in alternative media or alternative circus, it's all about money. They, this is a business to them. It's, a not, it, it's anti-life because it does not help us to attain that spiritual growth. What it does, it actually blocks us from going within because it keeps telling you it's here or there or there or there. And look here, there is, you know, there is hybrids now that are going to ascend you. There is this that's going to, there is this savior, there is that savior. The destruction, uh, uh, you know, and all of that, it's just, it's so much of it. And two years ago, I said that if we ever wanted to go within, we have to drop all that first. Because even if there is something, like you were saying, Christine, last time, if you identify with whatever, whatever that might be, a Pleiadian or whatever, it doesn't matter. If you are not anchor in your human body, you can't find yourself anywhere else. You just can't. All of that, like I said, it just doesn't make sense to do that. So that's why we see, because it's not about... The alternative media that what we called, it wasn't about human self-empowerment. It was just business. I've experienced that personally. I've seen things that are so unhuman done to human beings through alternative media people. So... Um, I know it's harsh, and I know I sound harsh when I say that, but that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is, and I can't, I can't allow myself to say something that's different from what I see. Yeah. I have to speak the truth. To echo what you're saying, Lily, for it, it is that way. When money comes in, when a person sells themselves or contracts to these larger groups on the internet now that are these large tv stations and such they're contracted in other words you know it's like anybody that's ever signed a book contract you give away a lot of times your editing rights you give away you give away your freedom and that's the that's the real bottom line here and it's a really hard one because it has to do with money and how we do commerce or how we ha what currency goes between us how can you buy or sell truth how can you buy or sell a spiritual knowledge you know so the minute it gets into that you know we're already within a field that's corrupted it's corrupted by the very medium of money itself I would like to add that um, it's not necessarily that somebody runs after the money. We have the other end of the spectrum as well with those who constantly claim that money is meaningless to them and they entirely live on donations, whatever, you know, whoever is kind enough to give them something. It's just exactly the same thing. 
which is the opposite of spectrum of the same thing, right, Claudia? Yeah. It, it is, you know. So, and we, I mean, I know I'm not going to be one to say that I don't need money, right? Because I am in this world and therefore I am, you know, I have to use some sort of currency. However, I feel like those of us that are pushing the, the edge, right? Pushing that cusp pushing on it, you know, is to push the human imagination into a place where we can imagine and start to live in a world that is not so contracted to this black magic money system. And so, you know, it is like, you know, and I'm watching these very, we're going to talk about probably more subtle things. I'm watching within certain personalities out there, <clears throat> That you know now they're they're picking up marketing language now they're promoting themselves through a certain way of oh I you know uh, the selflessness but I need money and so therefore uh, you know I'm going to sell myself and you can feel it it's so subtle though I, mean, I I struggle often to try to make it where that differentiation comes right and. And then the other side, you have either savior, I've got information and I can sell it. I've got the truth, I'm selling it. And you have the other side, I'm so humble that I'm just living off of your donations. But it is the same, the same. So how do, I would love to hear somebody else's thoughts on this. There's a word you're using there called currency, right? What other, what's the root of that word? Current, right? And what do we use that most frequently with? energy exchange, right? Electricity. So that's what money exchange truly is. It's currency. It's energy exchange, right? So even if you're paying someone a donation, you are giving them a form of your energy. You've worked for that money. You've done something, spent some type of energy to get that money. And I want to also touch on something Niels was pointing out too, is this idea of inside information. A lot of these programs, projects, cults that give you this inside information, do it with a spin. They do it with a spin that just puts you right back into a control system. It actually puts you into a deeper control system because you have that more potent truth as a carrot dangling at the end of it, right? So you're even more prone to believing whatever bullshit you're told because you see that little dangling golden shiny carrot at the end of it. That's all insider information truly is. It's another form of currency. Yeah, and I, and I will say that <clears throat> my experience is that anybody who has the ability to tell you anything will not tell you everything. So everything that you get that's filtered through a so-called upper source, you can assume that that's nuanced, that it has been designed to take you in a certain direction but you don't have full access to that knowledge this is the tripwire that comes with so-called whistleblowers disclosures and all these other things while <clears throat> valuable truth comes out of that the danger is that we once again hitch our stars to a certain person as being the be-all end all of the information stream which not only trips up the listeners, but I've seen it screw up the people that did the disclosing. And I've been rather close to this at times where I saw what happened when people realized that what they had been told wasn't complete. And in some cases, it was patently false. It was a misdirect to move uh, a certain situation in a certain direction. So the currency of information is that we don't have full access to all knowledge we have to find the frequency that resonates truth from the place we're at right now. And then we have to constantly be fluid in moving in and out of these different uh, vectors of information. And then sourcing from within, sourcing from within everything yeah. you hear, because right here within, there is truth. So mm -hmm. when you hear the truth, you know it's the truth. And there is no mental gymnastics that go into that discernment when you source truth from within. It just feels right. It feels right here. You feel it. And so this is, I think, the case with a lot of people in alternative media that were, um, well, they were actors because they were not spiritually aware to the point where they can understand that what they're teaching 
doesn't make any freaking sense. It just doesn't. No, a lot of it is a lot of it is wordsmithing and stagecraft. It's it's exactly presented that way. And the more slick it is, the better it's presented. You have to kind of look at that and go, how much of this is smoke and mirrors, lighting, and special effects? Because a lot of it is. And a lot of it is people who are working out of an imagination that they think is real, a program that's running, a loop that's running, but they themselves are not aware. There's an, there's an old saying in the New Testament and the scriptures, the deceivers are themselves deceived. And that's a lot of what we're dealing with is that the seeds of deception are sown from a higher level so that the people who are the deceivers are themselves the people who believe the very lies that they're spreading. Mm-hmm. So, Brandy, so and and anyone, but how how does one person listening to somebody who's, let's say, you know, a media star right now, okay, they're getting the most hits and most video views, even if that's real, we don't even know if that's real. The YouTube counts and the views and everything that's Uh, out there, we have no idea if that's real, right? It's all projected out there so people will follow something because people do follow. Oh, that's the popular guy right now on the block. Let me, you know, let me follow him or whatever. But how, yeah, so how do we, the viewer, discern or what discriminating clues are there that the story's been scripted? Because you have been with a lot of people in programs, both you and Shane, I know for sure, have, you know, been through programs yourself. And what happens to a person? you know, any super soldier, super space program dude out there, right? Uh, that when he wakes up inside, he's now a mesh. He's now super, super soldier, superstar. He's a mesh in a world and he starts to wake up that he's part of the program. What does he do? What does it take for him or her to unplug themselves from that? Do you understand what I'm trying getting at? I mean, do they just like succumb again and go, well, I'm here now. I'm I'm getting a lot of attention. A lot of people believe me, so I must be true. But in that consciousness, in the background, have you? Shane, I think Shane's the best person to answer that first person. <clears throat> I think it needs to be the opposite. Instead of looking at all that attention and saying that must mean it's true, look at it and think, huh? <laughs> why? Why is this? What? Why is this so popular? You know, if if you look at what we see in our society in, in terms of what becomes really popular is typically not the best and most healthy thing for us. Then if you take that same knowledge or understanding and you apply it to your own um, work or creative project, whatever it is you're doing, whistleblowing, uh, it should ring as true as well. Why all of a sudden am I getting 20,000 hits when yesterday I was only get a, getting a hundred, right? What changed? Is, did I change? No, probably not. So something changed there. So I think in that kind of situation, if it were me or when it was me, I would look at that and think, huh, what, a, what about what I'm saying is promoting this or producing this? And is that a good thing or is that something real? Maybe I need to look at that. Whereas other people tend to go the opposite route with that, where they're just like, huh, well, look at all these people who are, you know, riding my bandwagon. That must mean that I'm onto something, right? Like, I, I, I must be onto the truth. Otherwise, they wouldn't all be listening to me. Look at how great I am. That's, it happens, right? Like, um, it doesn't matter how much you prepare yourself for attention. Once you get that attention, it's an energy frequency. It's a, it's a form of currency that isn't, isn't something that everyone experiences, isn't something that you experience on an everyday thing. And even if you experience it for a period of time in your life, you're probably not going to have that experience forever. I mean, if you even look at a celebrity, they're not celebrities forever. They're not always in the spotlight, right? Eventually they'll fade out of it. So I think that in and of itself is just a, a small example of how a very simple change in your perception of something can bring you closer to truth. And it, it all, always comes to questioning the self and the answer to that, what do you do if you are that person? If you're Shane the Ruiner and you've told this this uh, story about this one topic and then you find out that maybe you're wrong, what do you do in that situation? Well, you fucking humble yourself and you say, hey, I might have been wrong. I am wrong. I'm sorry. Let's collectively, as a group, you and I, 
look at this and see where I may have been wrong, where I may have been right, and what, irrespective of right and wrong, what value can we take from whatever came through me, right? And I, I do think that that's the key is just that humbleness of being able to actually question yourself just the same way you would question those around you. You know, uh, a lot of the time when we're, you know, seeing faults in others, it's because it's something we identify with in ourselves. And that's why you need to always turn that mirror around mm -hmm. and um, take a good look at it. It may not always apply. Maybe you're not doing those things that are annoying you and another person. But if you don't take an honest look at that, you're not going to know. And you can fall into the trap of projecting. So true. And I, the, I think the, the measure that I use for myself is when I am triggered. Okay, that means I have an over-the-top emotional response on either end of the spectrum. Is The first aspect is to stop and listen and figure out inside me where it's coming from. And it's also very true, Shane, and this is another one of the memes of the, um, the New Age movement is that, you know, we're all mirrors to each other. And in that way, that's not an absolute truth. And I think Randy has just gone off the screen, but he has some things on his Skype that, that we're out of the time of absolutes right now. So there is no absolute truth within this, within this reality that we're currently dealing with. Um, because it's like, it's never, ever always true that you're a mirror to me. It's just not. But we get locked into these mindsets, right? Or if I'm reacting, it must be something in me, right? And that's not even true. Sometimes we react because our, our feelers go off or our, our, our sixth sense or our second attention gets triggered. It's up to us at that point to center ourselves and go into ourselves to find out where these things are coming from. And it, it can be quite a challenge to verbalize them. It can be quite a challenge to take this structured language that's been so corrupted also to speak about a truth. And that's another big aspect, I think, of what we're all looking at is the use of language or the misappropriation of the uh, meaning of our language that is so diffusive in our, in our situation. A word like discriminate now to most people is a bad word. You know, you're discriminating. It, it almost goes, you're discriminating against, which is not the original use of that word. So those are all like, you know, trying to, to put these subtle fields into some sort of context where we can transmit an, an, an information, hopefully, and as well as the best, in, the best of our ability that is not an agenda. I just want to throw a quote in there. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. Comes from Star Wars, Sith out of the dark side. Only okay. a Sith deals in absolutes, right? <laughs> well, that's a great I mean, thing to speak of. And I just uh, to further that, the triggers and not everything is a mirror. I mean, right now, I am very triggered by certain personalities in the alternative media or the media. And it's not because it's a, well, I, I guess in a way it is. It's because I know personally from personal experience how your own truth and your own story and your own experience can be used to further an agenda by certain individuals and that you have to be aware of that. And it's very easy to um, get too caught up in things and run too far with them and take them in a direction that you don't even mean to uh, because of the currency that you're being fed by. It's a, it's a difficult thing, and I know we're all sitting here right now in this situation where we all see or have had direct experiences with those out there in that, in that circus, all right? And there's a ringmaster, and the ringmaster is running the circus, right? And there are those that are jumping through hoops right now. And, I, you know, it's, it's always a challenge to speak cleanly and clearly and not add to the controversy, and yet, you know, part of me wants to talk about specifics. But how do we do that without bringing, adding our own uh, energy to furthering the circus? I can give an example of something like that that I've learned uh, uh, a lot from. Uh, 
when I first came out and started talking to some people in alternative media, um, it was, I'm going to try not to name names. Um, uh, there was a, a lady from a very uh, popular, I guess, website that was about um, ascension and going into fifth dimension that wanted to talk to me on her radio show. So, you know, I talk to everybody. If you want to talk to me, what if you want to find out what what I'm figuring out, sure, I'll share. Because from the very beginning, I said this is this does not belong to me. This is not mine. This is humanity's collective living field. That where I'm getting my sort of insights from. So I did. And only to uh, later find myself in a very interesting situation. And I think that (laughs) it's kind of interesting how life just shows you the real truth when you have intent to see the truth. Um, But just a few days after that, I start getting emails from older lady saying, where do I send, send my money for a session so you can give me um, keys to how become an earthling? I'm like, what? What do you mean? Uh, I am not charging anybody anything, and I, I will even talk to you. <laughs> If you want me to talk to you, and I'm offering that for free, not a penny, I'll talk to you. Well, what happened is when I went on that talk, well, the host of that radio show had actually used me and my talk as a business deal. Oh, now I own that information so now i'm going to charge 175 dollars per session to uh, you know to a retired lady to tell you about what lily is saying about you know her timeline i mean what do you do with that and right now this individual is going around posting everywhere that oh lily is dark She's dragging everybody into darkness. This is my experience with some of these personalities in alternative media. And the thing is, how can you hide that? If you have any spiritual awareness at all, you would never do that. How can you do that and then go on air and state that you care for humanity, that you want humanity to self-empower ourselves when all you want to do is charge people 175 bucks? It's like, wow. So we come right back to that, Lily. I mean, I got myself in trouble. Uh, my whole life, I've given away whatever I've learned. I always had my own business that supported me. And I was able to be a midwife, a homeopath, and I never charged any. I mean, and in my office and my business became like, you know, counseling central people come talk to me all day long, right? So I know that about myself. I don't need to prove that to anybody. This is my own knowing. And yet, And this is important, and and Claudia might want to speak to this. When we were outed publicly, we were attacked, if you want to use that word, by a media mogul, okay? Somebody well, well well-known and supposedly respected within that world. And where I got hung up, okay, and hung out to dry was that we were doing a, um, a, a support group that was we were collecting money for with two supposed professionals within that field. It's the only time I've ever received any money. 
And after that, a woman came to me and said, I want to pay you for a session. I go, I don't charge. I can't charge, but I mean, I need to eat. Right. All right. So I, I had no income. I still have no regular income. And I accepted at her insistence, a donation, if you want to put it that way. That was later turned and twisted and used to out Claudia and myself as unethical healers. And it was put out there, more than 50,000 people have seen that. It's still up in public view, right? And so this is what we're dealing with in in a way that needs to be talked about too. I don't really care about that. I really don't care about it. I care what I learned from it. I care about my own inner journey. And so I had to go inside and say, wait a minute, you know, and again, we're coming back to this fine line, you know, within this field, you know, we're, we're truth, true speakers as the best that we know it. Right. And yet the system is not set up to provide in any way on either end of the spectrum via donations or via charging for a healing session. So I'm just bringing it out there because I know that for sure, Randy, you've had your experiences. I know Shane has had his experiences with that. And yet this is the tone of, of trying to speak one's truth. Well, I learned for me is that I can't, I'm not. Every time I charged, every time I received money, not energetic exchange, money, for anything that had to do with my own developing spiritual truth and sharing it with another, I just decided there's no way I can do that. I can't charge for healing sessions. I'm not going to put myself out there as an authority, as many, many people do, and they're good people. But they're somehow charging $175 for a healing session. You've put yourself in a position of authority. You've put yourself in a position of having something over somebody else. And that's the whole aspect of this paradigm belief system that I'm knocking up against. So that's my own internal ethics in that. So I that's the, is, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Randy. I just want to okay. quickly, mm-hmm. quickly add uh, in this situation. The thing is, there's people that charge for their own experiences. And if the other individual wants to do that directly and pay the money, that's, but in my case, I had no idea that somebody's trying to take my words and make money off of that. Which is, and it so happened that universe, universe had showed me what was happening behind the scene. This is when it gets this is when alternative media gets into a big trouble is because this is what's going on with most of them. And mm-hmm. even what this new book on hybrids and what it does, it actually trying to catch those that are connected to this field, to this living field and cap it so they can control it. They want to control this information. This is the biggest thing and the biggest problem. And this is why when I speak up, I spoke freely. I shared freely, whatever I knew, everything. And all that alternative media, that not everybody, not everybody. But in this specific situation, what that whole thing was about is to cap this information. because. There was nothing new in alternative media on that time. It was really dry. Mm -hmm. And so, and the audience were thinning out. And so for those people, it's strictly a business move and they do it in a competition, you know, and if you, and and so I said, yeah, excuse me, you can't do that. You have no right to do that. And once I said that, then what happened? smear campaign all over to everybody else oh this is this is she's doing this she's doing magic she's doing and all the shit just just starts flying from their mouth is because they want to protect their business that's all it is for them sorry no actually that was great you actually hit on some of the things that i was going to say um the point I wanted to make is 
the mess that has been made about money is largely a result of what the black magic system has done. The cabal, the Illuminati, call them whatever you want, the archons. Um, we have led, been led to believe that, A, money is the only common denominator currency between people. So we're left with a money system that's mediated by the banks, by the black magic system. Then there's the confusion about the difference between money for profit and money for sustenance. The difference is corporations make profits. Individuals earn sustenance. And I'm trying to use words here that aren't as charged like income, which is a corporate term. You see, we get programmed by language because the the laws that are written by wordsmithing lawyers make us think a certain way. So the money that comes to us energetically as a result of an even exchange of values between two consenting people has nothing to do with profit. It has nothing to do with corporations. It has nothing to do with intermediary third parties. It's nobody's fucking business. I make an arrangement with you. We exchange values, whatever that is. And that's between us. It's a private exchange. Where it gets convoluted is that basically a lot of the so-called, again, quote, alt media are running businesses. They are operating in commerce. They are making commerce out of people like that talk show host did to you, Lily. Um, they will take a certain high profile celebrity figure out there who's maybe written a good book or two. And they pull them into the spider web. They basically go, look, we know you want to be famous. We know you have this ego that demands that you be front and center. So we're going to give you what you want. Here's the contract, said the devil. Sign on the bottom line. And your ego, your vanity, your desire for power, your desire to be the be-all, end-all, is actually the currency they're transacting. It's an energetic interchange because they know they can use that. And that is the same game that's played in Hollywood. It's played in the music industry. It's played in the corporate world. Um, money itself is simply a medium of exchange at any given time. There's nothing inherently evil about it. It's, an, it's neutral, just like technology is neutral. Both can be used for good and, good and bad purposes. And both can be compromised in such a way that we become convoluted in our thinking about it. You know, and I don't want people to think that if somebody comes to my website, I have a PayPal button. I mean, you know, a few people send me a couple of bucks every once in a while. It helps pay off some of the bills. I don't expect it. I don't anticipate it. If it shows up, it's great. And if it doesn't, there's no, no fault, no blame on my part. That's a, that's a free transaction of values. If I go out and I put myself up as a corporation and I go out and I market to advertisers and I give them my stats from my channels and all this other stuff, now we're in commerce, now we're in a different area. If I go sign contracts with someone as a business arrangement, now we're in commerce. And when you begin to do that, there's a soul death that occurs because you become an artificial entity. You see, corporations, we all know this, corporations are artificial entities. They're soulless golem beings. And when you begin to join yourself to them, you yourself give away literally a part of your soul. Yes. Like last time we were talking about that, that's anti-life. Meaning mm -hmm. it, uh, it, it cannot, you cannot be in there without selling your soul. You cannot do the contracts. But I so agree with you, Randy. The fact is that when people give you the money freely they give you what value they think you give them and so for that it's fair it's it's in harmony and there is no uh you know um it's just it it seems fluid and natural and organic I just want to go to the uh, the other, you know, to keep going, peeling back some subtle layers here, because brilliantly stated, Randy, and I mean, Claudia uh, is spent, dedicated a long time right now to really understanding commerce and 
the legal system and how that's written against us. And yet there is also that other underside, you know, and if you have the using the sermon is that there are there's out there in the media that also use the poor me. Uh, I know several very close and personally that they get very deep and not any longer personally, but I mean, they got very deep into the, oh my God, I'm being attacked. Oh my God, this, I lost that. And they're using an emotional human pathos to collect funds also, which is another way that they go about it. So, and, and I just want to clarify my statement about me and my own healing and the work that I do is very personal. I'm not putting that out there to say that everybody should think like me. This is my inner experience. This is my soul growth. This is my soul journey that I have found that for me, when it comes to spiritual truth speaking or healing, that I am perhaps indebted from past karmas or lives where it's my need and my soul to give that forth freely. And I do get myself pushback or blowback when I ever think to charge for it. I also know that I'm pushing the pocket of what we call currency, moving much deeper into energy currency, which is going to be the fundamental, in my mind, currency, free currency, free energy, free giving, you know, but right now we're in an in-between place. And right now, if I say to anyone out there and they want to you know, have a fair exchange that's between me and them. And that's just the way it is, right? So, yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. And it's, it's, it's a very important aspect of what we're talking about. Claudia? I, well, well Andy, what you were saying about um, the legal system and what, the system of commerce and language is in my mind, one of the most important things. If you really want to become discerning, watch the language of people who are in the media because they all use the same buzzwords. You know, a few years ago, it was ascension. Lately, it's been do your shadow work. People, I'm sorry, the ones who talk about doing shadow work, they wouldn't know their shadow if it was right in front of them because they don't look, they are not interested in becoming real. For them, it's all, you know, smoke and mirrors. I know, it's so funny how some people created programs out there of this. Yeah. And I just call it self-sovereignty program. They talk about self-sovereignty in the, in a whole strange way that it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. And yeah. that's the thing. And that's how we recognize all the programming anyway, because it just doesn't make sense. The words are coming out of their mouths, but they don't even know what the heck they're saying. No, they don't, because it, it's all, well, they're running a program. Yep. It's nothing more than that. You know, if, if you even scratch the surface, they will not know what to say, because they're completely clueless. I mean, somebody, you know, who, who constantly thinks how great they are, I mean, don't talk to me about doing your shadow work. Do it first, and then I might take you seriously. It's very obvious when someone has done it when they haven't, right? Like, and yeah. or if someone is doing it and they're and they're not, because uh, again, like I, I just said it. My own words just kind of contradicted myself because has done it, right? It's not a, it's not something you do once and then it's done, right? You're gonna have it's to. Cool. Those, it's I mean, exactly. As long cool. as the light's sh shining on you, you're gonna cast a shadow. Let's exactly. put it that way, exactly. right? So. Exactly. Let's uh, let's constantly look at that. Um, I always like to bring up the movie Peter Pan. What did like right at the very beginning? What what was going on? Peter lost his shadow. He was trying to find his shadow. He was trying to catch his shadow, reattach his shadow, because he understood that that was a, something important to him. Mm -hmm. Right. So even doing shadow work, people look at that like they're eliminating the shadow or they're getting rid of it. It's the same thing as when people yeah. talk about the ego, like I'm going to completely rid myself of ego. Okay, well, what happens when you're standing next to a tree and a branch falls off that tree and you don't realize you're not that branch and you don't get the fuck out of the way, you know, you're, you're going to get crushed by that branch. So that it's not, and the shadow is the same thing. It's, it's, it's part of this game. It's part of being a human being. You know, that's the thing I see a lot of this Ascension programming does is it's, it's, it's anti-human. 
It's taking you away from everything that makes you human. Everything that's beautiful about you as a creative being within this realm is being eliminated and stripped and ripped away from you by your very definition of ascension, right? You are all multidimensional beings that are existing on all of those other ascended levels that you seem to want to get to. You're also having this experience right here and right now, and you're doing that for a reason. And the more you try and separate yourself from that, you're you're only hurting yourself because yeah. you chose to be here. You chose to do this and you had a purpose. And the more you try and negate that purpose, the more you're injuring yourself. And speaking from someone who's come really close to putting up that paywall where I'll give you this much for free, but if you want to hear the rest, just give me a little, right? Just give me a little. Right? Can I just, it hurt, like it hurt here to get myself to the position where I started actually contemplating what I would have to create in order to maintain that wall. It, it hurt me here and I didn't do it and I won't do it because it hurts me here. Well, Shane, I'm just going to go with the flow here. Okay. You start talking about Peter Pan. All right. I'm having an emotional response from somewhere so deep inside me right now that tears are wanting to come up through me at this moment. And I feel like, what you said there, right there, being stripped of your shadow, there's something in that storyline. I don't know if it's part of our programming. Some of our deeper triggers are right there. Okay. I, you know, and these are the things that are very hard for us to bring forward. And like, I don't doubt for a minute that I'm part of a, pro I've been programmed. Okay. I don't doubt for a minute that I've been in the programs because if I wouldn't be so, empathic with you with Randy with so many of these other people that have been put through them there's something there and I think it's so fundamental and like I want to say I wanted to write an article called dusting off duality duality has been made bad it's not it is a state of being from which we're learning right and so that separated being that magical spiritual self that is represented by Peter Pan when it gets separated when it gets stripped of its other half that's for me the inner journey that's what's resonating in me at this moment right now when you were talking um, this is when we feel lost mm -hmm. because we're not whole right right because the darkness is part of your wholeness and this is what i see has been so used against us you know this this uh, dark, uh, I mean, light versus dark, you know, it's us versus them, you know, it's this and all this separation, separation. And even like, look at how the whole programs are built on that concept of being only half, you know, look at uh, law one, you know the harvest this and that oh it's uh, service to self or service to other in that saying and the way people understand it's like for a human being that is in its wholeness it's like are you kidding me this is so obviously a program because if we understand our wholeness that we know that if i hurt other I hurt myself. If I love other, I love myself. If I love myself, I am capable of loving other. I mean, that. In, I mean, it's so simple. It's such a basic knowledge that a human being is supposed to have as a creator being on this planet. That's the basics of us: is that we are in this reality and we know that this is one reality. But do you see, and the reason I think for that is because, and I'm going to be just straightforward here, because there is a self-destruct program that activates within a people. It is their own anti-life. It is their own anti-human program because the first thing they will attack and they will destroy is part of themselves. Everyone that I've seen go flaky in alternative media, uh, like really flaky, 
always go, their first step is self-destruct. As destruct, you know, destroy your own knowing, destroy your own value. And as a human being, and so many people out there have been trying to prove to me that being a human is horrific thing. There is a campaign against humanity within a humanity. And it is so obvious in the alternative circus right now. And that whole thing with, um, you know, service to others and service to self division, it's disgusting. It's so disgusting. It's anti-life. It's anti-human. And I think the hybrid main is playing a major part in that right now. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's so, I see how deep, how deep that programming is and how, how tricky it is. But the thing is, we are here and today we have this ability to share the truth. And so this is why we're all sharing because I, I can't stand for this to go on. And I think every one of us here that, that, that decided to speak about this today, it just, we can't stand humanity being stabbed in the heart over and over again for pe from people that are saying that they care for humanity and they want humanity to become a beautiful species. There is just those things that you're saying, it's like they're so contradicting each other. How can you not see that? And this is why we speak up, I think. This is why I'm here and saying the way I see it. I could be wrong. I don't know if, uh, if I'm right, but it feels so wrong. It just feels wrong. Isn't that what we really need to, to trust in a way? We all have an innate compass. It feels right or wrong in me, right? This is where I resonate from. And the closer we get to that aspect of our knowing ourselves, you know, I was just listening to Michael Tessarian last night, you know, and his, his talk on imagination. And he said, two most important things that we as humans have, we have know thyself, primary. And right behind that is the power of the imagination. But, you, but to be able to be there with those things, you have to know yourself, Otherwise, you're just being used. You're just fodder for, for the darker agendas until you get to that place. And we have these repercussion fields within us. They, we know. It's like you said, Shane, right now, it hurts. I've considered all the things. You know, I've been around a long time. So I've considered, you know, what I would have to sell of myself to be able to not stand in my truth for commerce, right? And I've walked through this life already and many different aspects of me being a businesswoman and all of that, I get to a place and it hurts. It hurts me, you know, or life will say, take me down a path and then walk me up on the side of the head with a two by four. Right. And I can only say that that's my own spiritual spirit. All right. It's going, Hey, you want to go that way? Go that way, girl, have at it, but you're going to get whacked. You know, and those are those, those big up and down upheavals. They all taught me something. And it all is about humility. It is about being that infinitesimally small being that I am in the huge infinity of time and immortality and, and eternity. It's to be humble, but that's where it all lies. It lies right there in that small part of me, who I am with you. It, 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 and to be untrue to that or to dishonor that in myself or another, I know it. I think we all sitting here in this space know that. Yeah, and, and it's like, you know, with all this programming that's anti-human, that is being propagated right now, like this hybrids thing it i mean when i heard that it violated my soul mm -hmm. yes yeah, so you felt 
you felt the violation of it, right? Because you weren't in, you're in this body in this now moment. And that is really essential. And it, it, you know, along with this, it's like, I got really emotional, Shane, when you were talking about Peter Pan. <laughs> I mean, it really threw me into a space here. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, but, you know, going back to you, Lily, and I also bring Niels into the conversation and all of us is that what is it that we could impart right now in that organic timeline, that, that fine line of discernment, right? Of like, we know this is happening. All of us have personal experiences now with the alt media circus rollout here, okay? And it's rolling full guns because they need the money, they need the viewership, they need the energy, they need us. They need us to fuel their agenda. Without us, they're powerless, right? So what do we as individuals do? Where do we find solace, communion? Where do we find the aspects of ourself that will keep us centered and grounded? Because I think it's only beginning. I mean, we've been saying that for a long time. We're going to move into, you know, I don't know when. I mean, I could be saying this for the rest of my life and still be saying it, and I probably still will. We're moving through. We're going to go into a time of upheaval. There's no, there's no way around that. Because unless humanity has a mass awakening and shakes off the shackles, um, we're closed. So I guess I would bring Niels into the conversation or what, how is it that we stay centered, grounded in what we can call the organic timeline here? Um, the key word that's coming to me right now would be empowerment. Um, just that, that to me is quite often the most discerning aspect of, of examining anything is does it empower does it have the potential to empower me or does it foster a dependency? Um, when we approach anything externally, that's what I'm looking for is, am I getting personal empowerment from examining this, from taking it in, or am I being led along to try and form some future dependency on something that, that I really don't need if, I, if I'm going to examine it. Um, I also wanted to talk about the fact that I do myself sell books and I also sell CDs. Being an artist, one thing that I've always maintained for the last 20 years is no contracts. I, I've never considered um, even seeking out regular publishers. I always wanted to have full control of what I'm saying. I don't want someone else to, to be able to take my words and put even the tiniest little twist in it. I don't even want an editor um, for myself. I'd like, I'd like my words to be my words that I'm putting out there. And that way I know exactly what I'm standing behind all of the time. Um, I haven't been in an active band for, well, it's about 15 years now. But right at the time before I quit my band, um, I said to the guys, the day that we get signed to a record contract is the day I quit the band. Um, it's just, I, I cannot sell my soul in such a way. Uh, it's already a huge commitment being part of any collaborative artistic endeavor where you're involved. I was, we're a five piece. So my life already had to answer to four people. I couldn't make any huge life decisions without running it by all of them anyways. And the same went for them. They couldn't make any huge life decisions that didn't hugely affect me. So to then throw a contract into that mix and say, okay, now there's somebody who's really in charge of all of us and is going to dictate and schedule everything all of our, our, our artistic expression, that to me was extremely abhorrent. And I made it very clear to the guys. They, they were talking, we need to get a record contract. We need to get make some money at this. Very, very difficult thing to do as an original rock band. And 
for myself personally, I, I, I just said, no, there's absolutely no way that I can actually do that. I'm sorry. And, and I ended up shortly thereafter quitting the band, not that the band got a record contract, but, uh, that was the end of my line anyways, with that, with that pursuit, but I, I do still sell books and CDs and that's just a personal exchange of the artifacts that, that I offer from my personal journey. They're, they're little milestones that have, have, I guess, aggregated throughout the years and I'll sell them to whoever wants them. And, uh, and I feel no guilt or, or negative compunction to do that. That's, that's just between me and you. If you want, if you want to check out more of what I have to say or, or to sing, no, I don't actually sing. I just play guitar. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. You know. Um, and I, I'm going to jump leap into something from off of what you're you're saying just for a moment because you wrote something recently about when are we going to stand up? Where is the testosterone? When are we going to say we've had enough? And it got some. It got you're usually very gentle and lyrical, and it got some. Um, it got some reaction. And. Um, I'm finding, I, I started something on our forum a while back and it was, Hey dudes, where's the fucking testosterone? And, um, uh, and it, it just like it, that got people's attention. And yet I found that the male voice was very subdued. It was only the female that stood up and said, I'm bare, I'm naked, I'm here. Come on, let's rock and roll. So, you know, there is a, a line between a very passive, peaceful being and also doing something that is really paradigm breaking, that really busts down some walls, right? And so this is like, we've had lots of these conversations and I'm, I'm very interested in what anybody might want to add to that. Like as, uh, I know as a collaborative grouping of people, we're less vulnerable right? If any one of us is standing out there separately, we're, you know, especially if you get a lot of attention, I know Shane did, Lily has, and I know you have too, Randy, right? You've stood your ground for a long time and you've taken a lot of flack. And so when we're talking in a, in a collaborative way, it's a harder for that machine hive mind bug mentality to get a read. It doesn't really know where to come in here. And yet, in a really real way, what is it that we, you, me, all of us can do? It's our being. It's a state of being. I know we have to maintain a state of, of being that is really fundamentally peaceful. And yet, how do we, you know, sometimes I feel like I want to take out a cannon <laughs> or, punch, you know, I'm speaking verbally, energetically, punch a hole in something, say, look, here's the way through, folks. Uh, Anyways, that's, and so where does that come from when you, Niels, when you got, what was going on there? That post that you're referring to, I was, uh, was actually just listening to Mark Passio. He's the one that inspired it, but uh, it was kind of speaking to the fact that, that evil, the reason that evil succeeds is because evil has the balls to go out and do something, right? Those who have evil intent, they're just like, fuck it, I'm going to impose my will on the world and they just go and do that in whatever way they can and the other side of it we have to either say no or we have to have more gumption to build some sort of an alternative to that evil empire that has grown up in the absence of us saying no and i kind of just phrased it in the, in the sense that that freedom needs to grow some balls. Like we can't just all pretend that we're free when we're so hopelessly enslaved in, in a very evil system. And the evil system grew up because we basically, well, the masculine abdicated the standing up and saying, no, this is wrong. This is wrong. And also an interesting thing that you pointed out there, I noticed it right away when I posted that on Facebook that one out of the first 10 respondents of liking that was a male. The others were all females. I, I, I was astounded by that. I was like, wow, the women are jumping all over this, like, yes, grow some balls. And the guys are all just kind of shying away, like, oops. Yeah. Well, we've had a, a panel on the Divine Masculine, but it, since we kind of jumped into it, 
um, if anybody wants to, guys, <laughs> I mean, speak to that. Uh, I know we're not going to, you know, it's like not about going out and demonstrating on the street. Any mass movement is going to get taken over. We know all that right now. Right. So what is the impulse that needs to come forward here? I think the biggest thing is for people to actually want to do right instead of wrong. And so one has to take action on their words. What is that? Because. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I've been around long enough now within this field, too, to know that there's a lot of talk and very little doing. There's a lot of talk and a very little real reality in it, right? So people found all the buzzwords and they, that machine mentality, it just absorbs, 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 twists, distorts, and puts back out there, right? So everything from the truth that is being spoken is, is absorbed into this and it's put back out there almost immediately now. So, you know, what I'm, I'm, I'm examining or looking for is what is it that's like, what are we looking at right now? What do we need to Let's be- look at that. Let's look at that Mark Passio video that you posted to the group. And I don't remember the title of it, but in that video where he's doing that talk in 2015, I'm, I'm assuming that was in Philadelphia at the conference. Mm-hmm. He has that interview on the street that's being done by what's the guy's name that does those um, Adam Kokesh. Adam Kokesh. Oh, Adam. Okay. okay. So Adam Kokesh was on the street and he's interviewing a staff sergeant, a military guy. He's on the street, you know, and this must have been sometime close to when Obama was elected, either the first or second time. But he's interviewing this military guy and he's basically trying to goad him into responding. Um, so, what is your deal? Well, I take orders. Do you have any conscience about the orders you take? No, I just listen to my higher ups. I take orders. Do you ever feel like you should question, is there a moral absolute, and I'm paraphrasing all this, is there a moral absolute where you would cross it, where you feel that your own morality comes into play? And the guy goes, no, I just take orders. And finally, he goes, is there anything you'd like like to add? And he's going like, no, I'm good. I'm good. And he's like, have a nice day, sir. And that's the standard script for authoritarian figures who are minions, which is exactly what this person is. They're a minion. Now, is that a male? Is that a man? Is that somebody that we're supposed to admire? Because that's the, that's the figure that gets presented largely today to young males who are in this indeterminate point in their life. You know, army recruiters play on this image. They did it during the, the, the Iraq war. I saw it with my son. When that Iraq, when the Iraq War came out, the recruiters descended on the campuses, and basically they were trying to play on this patriotic spirit, this idea of now you can strap a set on and you can go kick some monkey ass. And what they were doing was they were twisting the male role to become this warrior when, in fact, what they were becoming were minions of a statist agenda, a.k.a. the corporatist agenda of the United States in order to advance into other companies to be good imperialists. This is not the male model that I want to see advance. I want to see males, first off, <clears throat> that have a comfort level with their own masculinity, but balanced as well. Because, see, at any given time, these conversations get skewed. Mm-hmm. Like, we went to the sacred feminine, and for years, all we heard was the sacred feminine until I was ready to puke estrogen. And then... <laughs> We kind of go the other direction and we spin it again. And we have these guys out there, you know, they're big and they're gnarly and they're all roided out. All of this, all of this ignores the fact that there is a balance. And I think men sometimes really do want to stand down, not to give the place of the warrior to the woman, although in some cases the female is the fiercer warrior, but we want to be comfortable within our duality in terms of identity. Because as human beings, this whole gender thing is a result of something that happened to us a long time ago. The split in what became the the two sexes. And then obviously there's a lot of slicing and dicing and ambiguity. So we wrestle with all these sexual role models. But 
males are balanced. There is a part of us that has that feminine side, just as the feminine also has the masculine overtone to it. And we lose all that nuance because of all these ridiculous images that were fed. And then they spin it again. So now we're into transgender. Now we've got Bruce gender. Now we have AI. Now we have the hybrids. Because really, it's so much better for you to alter yourself into something you're not rather than being wholly engaged into what you are, which goes back to what I think we were talking about earlier with this whole hybrid thing and why that's disempowering, why that is blurring lines that don't need to be blurred right now, and why it takes your power away from you and gives it into the hands of a third entity that's out there trying to constantly navigate humanity towards their own extinction. It's definitely true on both sides um, that both the masculine and feminine kind of have a misrepresented or per- what I like to call perverted view of what they are supposed to be. Um, I've been very happy to see, you know, the, the sacred feminine being discussed so, so heavily. Um, obviously, there, I've reached my point where I wanted to puke estrogen too, but um, <laughs> at the same time, uh, it, it's been beautiful to see and we're not seeing it on our side, the masculine side. Um, we're seeing a lot of groups of women getting together and talking about what it means to be masculine or what the, the masculine energy actually is. But we're only kind of seeing maybe once in a while an individual male touch on the topic. <clears throat> I would like to see some more men come together and discuss that because I know for myself, I've got no, I've no idea what it means to be a man truly because I have this perverted, distorted view that's been fed to me by the society and cults and all these different people who understand the the truth in there that there needs to be a balance between the two that there's that you know part that both the male and the female vessel has that's that's balanced between the masculine and feminine and they've they've perverted that into instead of taking you know the male and female and making it so that they interlock like this they've taken the male and the female and they've made it so that they crash like that and that's where we need to we need to heal we need to figure out how to open that up again so that it can fit back together on both sides so i'd like to see some more men actually stamping up and you know taking their balls out of their purse and um you know doing that work uh but (laughs) i guess where that that kind of went uh (laughs) sorry it's disempowering to think that you're not both. It's disempowering to think that you're limited into one or the other. It's disempowering to think that your your humanity is broken, and so we need to interject alien in order to make you good. You know, like all of that is so wrong. It's so backwards. All of this comes down to choice. The choice is ours. We need to choose wisely, because what we're doing here, all of this, is something that we're doing to ourselves. It's not necessarily something that someone is doing to us. They may take advantage of our predilection to do this to ourselves, but at the end of the day, we are doing this to ourselves. And to think any other way is disempowering. As much as it seems like I'm, I'm you know, telling everyone that they need a good spanking, it's disempowering to think that the choice isn't yours and that you're not doing this to yourself, good or bad. So, you know, that... That is where that hybrid, it's its more than just the physical program of hybridization. It's the hybridization of the mind. And it's its um, putting a wall between the two aspects of this reality that are duality, right? It's, it's again, bringing us back to that point where duality is bad. Everything, light, light and dark are bad. You only want light. You don't want dark. I've said it before that if there's too much light, you can't see. If there's only darkness, you can't see. There's the only time you can see properly is when there's that good balance of light and light and shadow, right? So that's that's why we're here. And why disempower yourself to tell to say like you know I'm I'm only here because or I'm I'm not human because you know like I I understand where the idea of star seeds and all of this comes from. But at the same time, if you've chosen to come here to have a human experience, why not embrace being human? Well, yes, exactly. The hybridization programs, by the way, when you examine them, and this will be the show that will air this week for my sh- my program. <clears throat> I'm going to go into this a bit more because I want to I want to take this on from a wider perspective. 
the hybridization programs as we classically know them and as you know as much intel as we can get onto them were begun many who knows how long ago i mean hybridization programs in terms of extraterrestrial and human go back into history a very long time in the modern era this thing has basically had all of the components of a mind control program from day one. It is non-consensual. There's been the harvesting of DNA, the harvesting of eggs, sperms, all this genetic material, which has then been refracted into some alien birthing tube that has produced something that we're led to believe now produces a better human. But in fact, what it is producing is something that is probably very compliant to the very beings who engineered this project in the first place. You should be frightened by that. You should be horrified by the fact that anything has the ability to take you in any way, physically, psychically, uh, biologically, in any way, and alter your materials and spit that back out into the life stream and tell you that that's fucking better. That's ridiculous. Sorry, I got a little passionate about this because okay. this, is kind of a, this is kind of a, for me, this is like my big platform. I feel very, there are reasons why I feel very passionate about this, that this inflicts real damage, not only on the individual subjects, but on humanity as a whole. It's, it's, the implications are so vast that I think we really do have to have that conversation. I agree, absolutely. And it's what is especially frightening is that it it kind of <clears throat> strengthens the um, the victim mode that humanity is so prone to these days. You know, and and it takes away the responsibility factor, which is a huge problem on this planet, because nobody wants to be responsible for themselves. And bring in the hybrids and, you know, responsi responsibility just goes poof. wasn't me. Exactly. This is why it is so insulting to a human soul. Because yeah. we are hybrids. Okay? <laughs> Come on. It's like, uh, are you going to take something that is so real to us? And we know that. And that's part of us. And then you're going to have that much i don't know i don't know what makes a human being to take that and twist it against another human being and harvest that it's called a soul lily it's called a soul and that's not something you can manufacture but it goes into another cycle as well which is something we've kind of danced around on the periphery under the title of remembering getting our memory back collectively and individually, this whole loose cycle, energy harvesting, and then the incarnational cycles where you're wiped and shot back in to another incarnational cycle, which has, <clears throat> again, an impact on the individual and an impact on the collective as well. Because as a, as, as a race of people, we have rewritten history we have timelines that we know most now with some certainly, certainty say have been altered, but we don't collectively or individually have the knowledge of, of these lives that we've lived. And, you know, I mean, people who are going to argue reincarnation, we could have that conversation, but I assume that for this conversation and this particular, you know, whoever sees and hears this, that they understand that that is a very big part of what has been going on for a long time and the interference with humanity. Mm -hmm. So in all of this, <clears throat> our striving is to regain access to memory, to regain access to the core of who we are, the souls that we are, which are not this present carnate body, not this present matrix reality that we live in, you know, the construct that we call reality, which is very plastic, very fake sometimes, and yet very real. We're connected to it. You know, here again, there's, there's just all of these balances that we seem to have to walk through. It's like a minefield. I mean, I'm part of the earth. I'm of the earth. I connect to the earth. I, I, do, I do grounding. 
I love water. I love air. I love fire, all the elements. And yet at the same time, I look at it some days and I go, this is just like, this is like another theater. And, and, you know, so what we're talking about isn't one subject, it's a lot of subjects Mm -hmm. and all of them require some, frankly, very deft um, movement to understand how they, how they, operate and how to separate them i don't know somewhere in there there was probably a thought or i'm just ranting (laughs) no it's great it's great somebody bail me out here (laughs) yeah no no it's great because it is that it is exactly that we're we're an expanded we're expansive beings this humanity this very now being that we're sitting here grounded in this earth planet on this being because we're having our sustenance from the mother who is in this planet she is the mother right? And she embodies mother, right? She's giving, she's abundant, she's beautiful, she's, she's every aspect of what we have called the divine feminine role, matter mother, right? So Randy, when you say that you ground and you do that, and in that space, for myself, and I've determined quite a long time ago, when I got into this, I am going to remember, I'm going to Remember is put back together the members, right? We are all been fractured. And this is what makes us fundamentally invincible and at the same time very dangerous to the the matrix hive mind system. Because that hybrid, okay, my DNA is only now starting to activate. I am moving out. I know this. I don't have anybody to tell me this. And all of us as collectively, as we were like nodes of energy, when we come together, we start to fire each other off. So that collective memory becomes more whole, right? And so this is where we are able to start to bust through this, right? So that's why something like the hybrids come to save us meme is an absolutely fundamentally erroneous and sickening, right? Because you're trying to co-opt a part of me and say that you have something and you're going to give it out there. And so this is where it, this truth speaking, I may next week, next month, I might have another piece of myself back and I will be speaking from a different point of view. But right now I can only speak from where I'm at. And that's what I think all of us hold very much in common here. That common thread that runs through us is that ultimate respect for life itself. And so, yeah, I had, an, and you know what else makes us really dangerous to all of us is that as we recover our memory, I remember being picked up. I've gone into the recycle chambers. I've been there. All right. I know what it's like. I'm dangerous now. They leave me alone. Really. You know, because being able to penetrate into those corrupted spaces and not lose myself over all these eons of time. I may have lost myself for 10,000 years. I don't know. Right. But somehow I'm standing here right now and I'm speaking my own inner sourcing truth. And frankly, you know, I I had to determine at some point in, in this in this life, I'll give my life for it. Take it. I don't care. I'll come back. Right. I'm, I'm, I will. And so will you. And so will all of us. So well, I think we're activating the meme. And I think that's the whole point of this. The most dangerous thing is in my, it, it's kind of my, I don't have an inside view of what, you know, the reward system is for the Illuminati families, the cabal and all of that. But I would think that the promise sits out there of regaining what we would call total recall. I suspect that that's a currency of some kind because it's very powerful. This seems to be why the elite and the black projects have pursued um, various looking glass technologies uh, in order to be able to somehow channel this whole time stream thing, because it's very powerful. Uh, He who knows the past controls the future, and yet we don't know the past. So the future now is being controlled by those who have access to it, whether it's the Vatican Library, the hidden library that sits in Tel Aviv that's being used by the Sanhedrin, or whether it is um, time technology that's being deployed by black ops projects to be able to interdict future situations. All of it is the same thing. It's the same meme. It's the same currency. So I assume that somewhere in all of that, maybe even more than so-called immortality is the ability to capture 
the total recall ability. And yet, a little bit of both. Well, uh, the the image immortality, the uh, attraction to that is essentially to hold on to all of that knowledge and to have more time to get more of that back, right? And the more you remember, the more you know, the more mm-hmm. you learn. Being able to store that for forever becomes attractive once you start getting it back. The other one being, hey, we can give you a little bit of that back. We can give you the ability to, hey, you want to go see what happened when the crucifixion went down? Like, you want you want that knowledge firsthand as experience? Well, we can offer that to you if you, you know. Anyways, um, to get into the solution, it's something you guys have touched on before, the collaborative mind. It's It's that unity that both sides are talking about. I've said it before that, and I think Mark Passio has said it as well, uh, a lot of what the elite or the dark side, whatever words you want to use for that have, is the ability to work together and and become a unified unit. We can do the same from a more organic approach where we realize that it's not about um, compartmentalizing it and, and creating new compartments, that it's about collaborating together. It's that we all have a piece of this puzzle. And if we bring all those pieces together without the competition of my piece is nicer than yours, then we can put that puzzle together without, you know, fighting amongst ourselves and, and without attaching to our own individual piece and being more excited for what happens once that puzzle all together than what your own piece brings to that puzzle. And that's, that is the collaborative mind. That is bringing together all of our, our shared experiences and our, our individual experiences for examination in a, in a, on a slight collectively will heal all of that trauma and all of that separation and, and division that, that didn't need to be there. Um, we talked about duality and how that's important. That's a, that's a type of division or separation that, that may be important, but the, the separation between you and I is not in, in the sense that I'm better than you and you're worse than me or you're, I'm worse than you and, and, and you're better than me. Because I've seen it on both sides. Like, you know, someone will talk to me and say that, I, that you know, look up to me in a certain way. And that, that's a weird feeling, you know, and, and I, I, it's a weird feeling when I do it to someone else as well because I realize that we're we're all just doing it for peace. And that's the only difference. It's the same, you know, analogy of that. It's, we can either close ourselves off and come together as two blunt objects, or we can open ourselves up and interlock as cogs in a wheel and parts of a, parts of a whole. And that's, that's all it is. Right? All different parts of the whole. And it's important to be honest and, and humble in that and actually take a look at it. Because if we don't, we're going to keep on heads and we're going to keep, charging for the truth and we're going to keep doing all of these things that that we've talked about um hybridizing uh ourselves in a way that's not healthy you know uh this meme of even soul and genetics is something that that comes to mind because like it's been talked about here we, as a soul we're all hybrids as genetic beings we're we shouldn't be Right. Like that's 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 not the point. And even the idea of like, let's let's hybridize humanity because of past mistakes. Well, those past mistakes were hybridizing humanity in the first place. So how does two wrongs make a right? And how how do you like solve the same how to solve the problem from the same level of consciousness that created it? Right. You uh, you're just repeating the same mistakes. You're, you need to think up something new, which is, hey, maybe we should just stop messing with this and let's see where it develops on its own if we just leave it alone for a long enough for it to do that and i think that's the key i don't think it's about ascending or having our genetics opened up or anything like that i think it's just about taking away anything that would cause that or cause the opposite of that for long enough to just see where it goes to see what is natural for the human being as it is regardless of what has happened because the soul overrides it all anyways. And when we come down here and we incarnate into these vessels, we're healing it and we're, we're, we're causing it to grow and we're creating the collective reality that is planet earth and the human experience. So we always have an influence on that. So let's just leave it alone and see where it goes. Instead of trying to say that I have the authority to, 
to dictate where this goes because I see it on both sides, you know, where I see people who have good intentions coming along and throwing their intentions on the planet as a whole and saying, oh, you know, I'm going to go take out this race so that they will leave us alone. Well, that's a choice you don't have any kind of authority to make, you know, let them do their thing. You focus on you and your responsibility and take responsibility for yourself and they don't have an influence on you anymore. It's the same idea of being manipulated. If that aspect of you isn't there, it's not going to be manipulated because that's what manipulation is. It's something that's there that you can take and twist. And if it's not there, then you're just going to be grasping at nothing. So <laughs> the answer is very clear if you just look at it from a natural point of view. And let, let's come together and <laughs> make that real instead of, instead of fighting over who gets to make it real. Let's do it together. Yes, there is no competition in this. And I know you like to say this, Shane, that, you know, at some level, your higher being um, designed this life, designed this incarnation. Uh, you want, it, you know, no matter how much you are hanging on to that victim mentality that somehow you are poor you and this is all happening to you, it is not because you are source. We are source connected beings. So we've designed this life and we're here for a very, very good reason incarnated in the human body. And this is what um, I've been trying to to speak about to, uh, to people. And I've even called out those people out there that's been in alternative media or being and saying, oh, you know, um, I am this or I am that, I'm, uh, you know, uh, this alien or, or that consciousness and I'm not human. Well, and, and I've called out publicly Simon Perks on that. I said, what the hell? You're human first, you know? <laughs> uh, excuse me, uh, you know, how, how can you, like, look at yourself in the mirror, dude? And so, but the thing is, no, you know, the lack of responsibility on those people's part and, and what they like to use because they are playing in, in the field of victim and victimizer. And that's the only field they're capable of playing in and they don't have anything else. So what is happening, they can't either, they cannot be independent, you know. They cannot be anchored in their wholeness because they reject their own human existence. Or, so, sorry, Lily. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I just, uh, you know, I just jump in, you know, when you mentioned the first time you've mentioned a name is Simon Parks, right? So I want to say hello. Hi, Simon. Love to talk to you again. Anytime. Yes. Anytime, and Simon. You know you're gonna hear this, so you can't you can't pretend that you didn't hear this and and blame right. it on daddy. Okay, <laughs> exactly. So there daddy we have. Just... <laughs> we actually have a, a being of. I mean, you know, I considered him a friend, right? And I still do, actually. Uh, you know, and but he's the you know I'm for a third reptilian, third mantis, and third human. Okay, that's a hybrid, right? Which when we all really look at it. We all have those components in us. It doesn't make him any special or different than any of us, right? So what does he do? He has a problem, and then he rejects the father, right? He rejects the reptilian aspect publicly, right? So where is this leading any of us? And I'm asking you, Simon, if you listen to this, where does this lead us into, right? Where are you trying to take the consciousness when you do that, right? And it's just an open, honest question. I think when we have public figures, we can openly and honestly question them without stirring it too much. Because what are you saying? You know, oh, my daddy made me do it. Therefore, I've X'd him out of my life. And I'm not going to put his picture on my website anymore. Nanny, nanny, nanny. I mean, come on. You know, so, you know, I don't think that I think we can be a little bit ironic and sarcastic here when we see things of this nature. Right. And I think, you know, we've been dancing around naming names and I heard Randy so beautifully go, OK, I'm going to say some names when you were with Thomas the other day, because, you know, I don't want to make controversy, but I invite Corey. Good. Corey, call me. OK, that's what I've been saying, too, is like the, the, there's no point in this happening. We have these these things that we need to talk about. We are all part of a collective within this alternative media crap 
circus sideshow freak show that we've created. Why are we causing these divisions? Let's fucking talk to each other. Right. You know what I mean? Corey, you and I have a very big problem. We've had a very big problem for a year. Come talk to me, dude. I've been open to you the entire time. I've messaged you. I've, I've, I've offered you that opportunity and you haven't taken it. You've decided to message me cryptically in your blogs and videos. Don't do that. Come talk to me. Same thing would go to anybody out there. I am open to speak with any of you. You know, I had a very big critic come on me and, and make three videos talking about why he thought I was full of shit. And what did I do? I spoke with him. We developed a relationship where, no, we didn't solve all of our problems. We didn't edge out all of our differences, but we were able to discuss them in an open and honest way. And that's important. Whether we actually see or agree with each other, see eye to eye and agree with each other at the end of it or not, at least we've given ourselves that opportunity to actually discuss these things. Right. You know, we, <laughs> I make fun of myself, so I'm going to make fun of you too. Let's put it that way. Right. <laughs> so that's what it comes down to. Right. I'm open. I'm, I'm just as critical of anything that I've said as I would be of anything you've said. And all of you are my friends, the same thing, right? We, we, we would do this amongst ourselves when we saw the opportunity. It's no different. I'm going to call it one, one step further. Corey Good, David Wilcock, Simon Parks, all of you out there with your agendas that are running off of Guy M TV, you won't mm. talk to me or Shane or Randy or Lily or Claudia or Neil because you're contracted. Okay, because you yes, need a you deal. Scared and I don't care. I really, really don't care. What I care about is the soul being that's there in all of you. And I always have. And it's the same thing. Why did I ever resonate with Corey? Why does Peter Pan and pirate ships resonate with me? Because I know the being that's being subjected and used. You all are being used for an agenda. And it's not like I'm trying to criticize you, but I can make fun of you. Why not? And I would say, talk about shame publicly. Talk about me. Talk about Lily. Talk about Randy. Go ahead. Do it. But you won't. Okay? Because if you did with your large audience, you would draw attention to us. And you won't. And that's right? why you ignore and you blame it on daddy and you think that every one of us is idiot and not seeing it for what it is. Well, And then, and then they get upset that, that you reveal them. We don't even reveal them. You reveal yourself. They reveal themselves that how idiotic that agenda is. It's like, here I am, Simon Parks. Oh, I am here. I stop CERN. I am this great savior of this planet. And then you go and you say, oh, I did all those bad things because it's daddy's fault. Are you freaking kidding me? Like well, I would suggest that in the case of some of these people, and we'll, we'll start with Simon and we can go forward. There are people out there that Simon needs to make things right with personally. I mean, I've talked to some people who were abused by him. You know, they did not want to go public. They came to me with some other information because I was public in my criticism. And <clears throat> quite honestly, the compassionate side of me says, we don't need to drag all this dirty laundry out, but you need to take care of it personally. Mm -hmm. The same thing with Mr. Wilcock and Corey Good and all these other people. You need to find a way to walk away from your contracts right now because those contracts are on your soul. Um, you know, if you feel like you need to do 40 episodes and milk the duck continuously over the secret space program and all the woo woo and then spin it and recontour the story back and forth endlessly to keep an audience, then I'd say you've already betrayed your integrity. And we don't need more fairy tales or science fiction stories. David Wilcock is a brilliant researcher. Mm -hmm. Everything else about him, aside for a moment, good or bad, the man is a brilliant researcher. And he aggravated a lot of good information. And he's a value to humanity when he does that. And the point of all of this is in this conversation and the other conversations we have is we're all flawed. We're all wrong. I've been co-opted. I've said things that were in error. I've had guests on that I regretted. In a co couple of cases, I've had to kind of speak to that. We make mistakes and we atone and we go on and we, we repair the damage that we've done the best we can. That's the breach in humanity's conscience that we have to fix. Mm -hmm. We have to be flexible. We have to be humble. We have to be willing to be healers 
first of ourselves and then of others. Beautiful, Randy. I can throw a solution on that, which is that, you know, we'll say things like so-and-so lied, right? And when we're talking about it in that sense, we'll say so-and-so is a liar. And we have a tendency as people to take that as a, as a title, right? As something that's solid, stamped in stone, never changes. It's just a fact about that person. They're a liar. That's not what it means. It means that when they're saying that, they're, they're lying. And at that moment that they're saying that, they are a liar. Any of that can change at any given moment just by taking the lie away. If you take the lie away, you're not a liar anymore, right? And so I've, even if, you know, I've been a liar, you've been a liar, we've all been a liar. Does that mean that we're all liars? Yes and no. It means that we all have done it. We all are capable of it. But we can all choose not to as well. Right. And therefore, it's not a title. It's not stamped in stone that all of us have to be liars because we have lied. It's always a choice. And that's that's part of this healing process of, of doing this. And a lot of what people have a hard time when they're admitting when they're wrong is that type of title to come along and say, you know, I told you this story and it turns out to be bullshit. You know, I, that doesn't put a title on it that I was a liar or you were a liar. That just means that that story was bullshit. I've identified that as bullshit. No, telling you that it's bullshit so that we can all move forward from there. And any mistake is forget forgivable once you realize that you've made the mistake. And for any of those people that we've mentioned, and any of us collectively, if we make those mistakes and we you know, own up to them and we try to make amends, like you said, like whether it's a personal amends, like I've had the same thing where I've had a personal interaction with another individual that that they felt or they perceived that I was harming them in, and they went public with that. I went to that person and I made amends, or I tried at least to make amends with that personally, because that's my responsibility. And these other people who are taking that responsibility, you're not hurting the other people as much as you are really hurting yourself but you're hurting other people as well so you should do something about that and and that's where that solution is is being able to realize that it's okay to be wrong it's okay to make mistakes it's we all fuck up we're all equally fallible and that is okay let's learn from it and not repeat it and let's not you know Blame it on something just so that we can keep our audience. Let's let's actually be honest about it, and and that's where we will collectively heal from it and figure it all out. And to the audience, to each of the viewers, to each of the listeners, to the ones that share videos, the ones that share information, those that are listening because it's the cool thing to do or whatever, right? They're equally responsible in this too. This is not about the person that actually is trying to have the courage to step forward. And, you know, I, I, I can sound harsh. Okay. There's a reason that I put forward what I put forward right now, because I really do. I would really, really love to have the conversation with a Simon, with Corey, with David. And I doesn't take away from the good work they do. And that's. And the- I will add as well with Alfred. I believe that, you know, Alfred's likely to see this video. Right. And I want to be, I want to extend that olive branch because, frankly, there's a breach right now that I can't seem to mend with Alfred. So hopefully, you know, you'll see this. And I want to say something about Alfred that I didn't get to say because we he because of an upheaval we had or a discord we had within the last panel we were going to do with him. My introduction to Alfred and it stands true. You see, that's the thing about lies and truth. They're all half lies, half truths. Right. There's no full absolute here is that Alfred's done a great service to the community because he has put forward, you know, almost in a steady stream, people from every fringe of everything, right? You know, but it's time now for the discernment factor to kick in, right? We are flooded with so much information. I love Alfred, right? And so it's like to be able to mend that. And I'm sure I'll do something on a personal level along that line. Um, but it, it, it is that, and that's like saying, Hey guys, you know, David, you're right. David is a brilliant researcher. Oh my gosh. You know, it's like, Hey, look, you know, we were once your audience. We were once those that listened to you. It's like, don't isolate from that. Don't isolate from that in any fear of anything, because you know, what it really comes down to is humanity. 
And it's that life giving source that we all can learn to source together. So if anybody hears this and takes offense at it, then look at your offense. What are we offending? You know, this is the, the inner journey that is so, you know, don't just take the words and spin them. Let's look at it together. That is really, truly the, uh, the let's just say what the deepest place in me would like to have see happen here. I want to add a little bit to the responsibility factor, the self-responsibility. And, and that's, uh, I think if we, if we present this and tell you guys right now that, you know, we've done it and we were wrong. I know I was wrong a lot of times and, and it's not easy to do, but once you choose the truth, and you speak the truth about your experience, right there in that moment, you've changed everything about the past because you just stepped into the truth. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that a lot of these people are scared to do that. They're afraid that they're gonna be judged and all of that stuff for making mistakes or being in manipulated or being co-opted or being corrupted i have said i've been co-opted corrupted so much in my throughout my life and programmed heavily and it's not about uh, uh, you know me judging others i'm just saying that once you step into your truth and you share that and you open we all know that we all make mistakes and humanity will open its arms to you, but you have to stand in your truth. You can't just think that because you got caught, you have to now keep spinning more lies mm -hmm. to protect your lies or your, you know, it's ego. It is so obviously an ego protecting itself, but your human soul doesn't want that. It wants truth. It wants love. It wants to be part of collective humanity because we are human beings. We are designed to love each other, be with each other. We are a collective. There's a lot of us and we love to be around other people and create together. Mm -hmm. So the value is what I see is that the the fear of taking the self-responsibility is what stops some of these people. And then they keep spinning the lies until they completely self-destruct. And this is what we're saying here. We are inviting you all to an open conversation and just be in your truth. No matter what happened in the past, we need to let go of past. Because if we don't, we're going to go into the exact same cycle. So we can make a different choice right now. Right now, at this moment, you, any of you, it doesn't matter how much you were co-opted or corrupted or whatever. Right now, you can stand in your truth. And humanity supports truth. That's my opinion. Valued one, Lily. And perhaps that's the best note we could end this on because I'm, I'm already thinking of how we can go into other aspects of all of this. But deeply, fundamentally, as humanity, we all want to belong because we do belong. We belong to each other. We do. And so the false agenda, if you, you know, we so desperately want to belong, we've been so fractured that we've bought these false realities that said, just come over here and be popular. You belong over here. We'll give you rewards over here. You know, so this is what we're breaking through. But we all do belong to each other. And there's no separation really between me or any other person that I'm naming right now. And that's why I'm able to feel them, see them, and, and embrace it. And also my responsibility is to call it out as I see it. For me to not call it out, I'm being neg negligent to a truth that I see. No, I could be wrong. That's all, and I'm always ready to be wrong. And I think Shane's the one that said it, prove me wrong, brother, prove me wrong. Show me the blue avians, show me, you know, you know, anything and let, let's walk through it together. Let's walk through it together. That's fine. You know, but when you're, when you're only, you know, angling it from, and you're not being honest, you know, um, you're not saying, look, I was in the programs. These could be overlaid memories. You know, I'm part of the hybrid program. I could, I mean, this is where I'm going in myself right now. 
is into a deeper level and aspect of my own programming. It, it's a very deep one. And I know that it's kind of rocking me in a way uh, because it has to do with some really hidden agendas here. But I think this is what we're, we're preparing for is the next step of, of our own collaborative uh, evolution or memory, however you want to call it. Um, but we have to do it as honestly as we can, as brutally, as ruthlessly with ourselves as we can. You know, honesty is pretty ruthless. You know, truth is pretty ruthless, but it's also on the other side of it is the most magnificent thing that you could ever stand in. Um, that's probably I what think right, I think yeah. right now, given the energetic that we have going on, um, <clears throat> and as Shane's talked about this, the wave, um, whatever it is, there's an impulse right now for things to want to come up. This is part of the, again, the shadow work, the inner work. Um, and we don't want to resist that, you know, and so, and we don't want to resist it in other people. So like any purge right now, there's a certain level of ugliness that goes with it. And there's a process that we have to go through that's going to be kind of uncomfortable, but go through it because it is part of what's, what wants to come out of both individual and collective humanity and maintain your energetic, do the things that are good for your body, good for your spirit, good for your soul, and go through this process because at the other end of this, there's something very beautiful that's, that's wanting to come forth in humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So practices like grounding, uh, sun gazing, go out at night and just look at the heavens. I mean, there's so many very si simplify, simplify, simplify. You know, yeah. all the complexity isn't going to take us there. It's just going to keep us lost in these loops. So for my, myself, I say that all the time. I simplify. Uh, it, it, you know, and it's almost like it is like that metaphor or whatever. It's like we're threading the eye of the needle. And we've been through it. We're in a passage. This passage, I don't know how long it's going to last, but we've been in it for a while now. So as the passage gets narrower, the edge of the sword gets sharper, we also have to jettison all the false beliefs. Uh, and and the, in that, you know, Shane, it's like that, it's that duality thing. You know, here's this narrow, narrow passage that will not let us take all of our bullshit with us, right? So we have to we have to let it come up. And at the same time, Shane, you said it so beautifully, and I wanted to almost end with that, was like love is space. So when we open space, when we open ourselves, right? You know, when we're not like doing this, and it's the male, female, but it's also the, co the co collective humanity. When we allow space to open so that all of us can allow the universe really that intelligent flow to to bring us into this fluid state of being which is our home it's our home you know we left home a long time ago you know and that's how like in the only way, words that i know how to adequately describe it right now when we talk about love we're talking about you know, something that covers a very wide spectrum the way of looking at it is you know <laughs> Uh, love it, love being the opposite of fear and love being what's going to connect you to everything. Mm -hmm. We're kind of uh, spent 2,000 years or however amount of time in a, in a cocoon. Right? We're, we're making the process from caterpillar to moth and butterfly. And, you know, I can say just that moth and butterfly, one person might look at that and go, oh, moths are ugly and butterflies are beautiful. Well, I think they're both beautiful. And that's what love is is being able to see the beauty, as Niels has said, in our differences, right? To be able to see the beauty in the light and the dark is what love is because it encompasses and it respects everything as part of the whole. And that's what we mean when we say we're all one. And that's what we mean when we're all connected to source. It's all love. We're connected to love. That's what that is. It's, it's being able to see everything as having its beauty. And that, that, and I don't mean to say that you know, we just need to leave the dark alone because it's good. We just, you know, just leave it alone. That work shadow work is still important, but its existence isn't inherently dirty. It isn't inherently ugly. It is a beautiful opportunity for you to express the power, power of your own being. 
that's what love is. Beautiful. It's a state of being, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you can't get there by avoiding going through your fear. No. You can't avoid that because you can only get into that state of being going through it. Like you said it last time, Christine. It's no. going and nobody yes. can do it for us, right? Nobody can do it for you. Nobody can. No alien race, no godlike being, nothing can do it for you. It is your own journey. And we're just here uh, expressing our own path, going through it, and trying to express how it is really beautiful on the other side. Mm -hmm. Because here we are able to come from all these different perspectives and have a conversation where not once we went like that. You know, because we can express this love that's inclusive to all that is here in this reality. To give an example, I'll use a quote. It came from programs, but the way out is through. Yep. Even though that came from the dark, it's still a little chunk of light that uh, if you travel through the dark, if you go through that fear, it's where you're going to find all those cute little nuggets that make it so that once you find that middle point again, you don't, you don't slip to either extreme mm -hmm. beyond that point. You explore both realms as being equal and part of your inherent right as a divine being to explore. So, and it's it ultimately it's the mystic, the meta mystical, the, all the, you know, the great wisdom speakers throughout all this time that have always been holding that, that is the path. And why is it the path is for each of us to discover, uh, you know, that path through that, that dark, uh, but that's a path that's been so blocked off from all of humanity because that's where the power is, really. So, you know, my investigations say that the cabal or those that are the manipulators, controllers of this reality have access to that. And they've made us afraid of it. They've made, uh, they've, they've tortured us. They've done everything they can to keep us away from that door. But once you have, find that courage in yourself and you open that door and you walk through it, you will find out things that, Nobody can talk to you about. Nobody can tell you about. Um, and I only know how to express now through my own creative self. That's the only way I know how to express it. It's not, I'm not going to do it through commerce, through a job. I'm not going to, you know, it's my own creative impulses that are the expression of having gone, open that door and walk through it. Maybe I got kicked into it. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. <laughs> right. So it, it's, it's so beautiful talking to everybody and, um, I think it's a good note to close it on. Anybody wants to make a, a final thing. I, I feel we could do this again. And maybe we will. <laughs> That's it. Everybody talk at once. That's the way okay, to let's end Let's all talk at once. And, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and clap. All Thank right. You all. Are you done recording? Uh, I'm turning off the recording right now. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs>